Hello, everyone. Naomi Meredith here, and I am so glad that those of you who are here today, you are spending time with me for a little bit. And I know there's going to be a lot of people watching this back since they still have school today, which is no problem at all. So there will be a replay of this. So even if you can't come in for the whole time, um, you can catch the replay. It'll be in your platform later on today. And there will be the video replay as well as a pod, private podcast replay. So for this training, we are talking about STEM summer prep for back to school. And we are currently live. So if there are any technical difficulties or if you hear my little dog bark, I think he's sleeping right now. Yep, he's sleeping away. But that is the fun part about going live. You get to see everything in action and everything is unedited. So if you are joining us here live, there are, um, you can actually jump in on the chat and we will chat about that. All right. So uh, as we get started, if you want to jump in on our live chat, you can do that. And I can see it while you type. I think I figured it out la <laughs> for this time. Last time, I couldn't get it figured out. So I think it's good to go. So if you want to jump in on the chat and introduce yourself, you can go to naomimeredith.com slash chat. And in that link, that link's going to be popping up the whole time on all of my slides. I can see everything as you are talking. And if you want to introduce yourself, what grade level or levels do you teach? Maybe you are a STEM teacher. You teach multiple grade levels, K through five. I know there are a lot of teachers here in this space who teach pre-K through eight, which is quite a range. I've also recently have talked to teachers who teach fourth in fifth grade STEM or even a K-1 STEM, which is pretty cool. So um, even there are a bunch of teachers in here who just got their STEM jobs coming up for the fall. So I think this training will be helpful for all of you. So um, if you want to head to naomimeredith.com slash chat, and then I can see who is here today and any questions you have along the way. I think there is a slight delay also, so I don't see it exactly in like 100% re real time. So I apologize if you ask something, um, it pops up in a like a slightly delayed manner. But I'm so excited about this training today. You guys know I am all pumped up about all things STEM. And you're probably here today because you want to organize your STEM plans for summer. So if that is you, drop a yes in the chat. We know that summertime is a such it's such a unique time for us as teachers. And during the summer, I am the most creative during this time of year. Yes, it's all of the beautiful sunshine, but also it's a, such a great time for me to really explore um, different things that I haven't had time for throughout the school year. So during the summer times, I really feel myself getting real, a lot of inspiration from when we're traveling, um, from when I'm going on walks with my dog. I get a lot of inspiration inspiration while I'm outside. And so the summertime, yes, please do. Please, please, please relax. That is like number one. But you also know, yeah, you have the time to organize your STEM plans, which is a really great time. Um, we have Kathy here who is K-8 um, and it's an iExplore lab. So she has 900 students in Arizona. Well, welcome, Kathy. That is a lot of kids to teach. And I'm sure you do an awesome job. You have a lot of, a lot of things that you have to plan for. <laughs> um, you also are probably here on this training because, yes, it's the end of the school year. Again, some of us are still in school. I'm here in Colorado. Um, so we start pretty early in August, like the first week in August. And then I'm actually out of school right now. Hence the training is during the middle of the day. But it's the end of the school year and you want to prep some things now, which you can. We're going to talk about those things um, for back to school so you're not as stressed out because definitely end of school year is stressful but back to school is also equally as stressful. And there are some things that you can do now while you're in school and also during the summertime. So that transition into that back to school, you're not as stressed. So if you're excited about that, definitely drop a yes in the chat. So 
going thinking about back to school time. I know it's weird talking about back to school now, but these are the biggest things that I I know for sure that going into my STEM classroom, these are the things that I 100% want to be prepared with. And you probably do too, especially if you are a new STEM teacher, you might not even realize that these are the things that you want going into your classroom. And these are the um, tips that I'll be sharing in this, I was going to say episode, we're not on a podcast, but um, in this training today. So you definitely want to feel prepared with your materials, have a year-long plan, and a lesson structure that you can really feel confident about. Also, spending some time now during this back-to-school time a little bit over the summer, that way going into the school year, you're not spending a lot of time outside of school figuring out what to teach so you can enjoy quality time. I've talked to so many teachers recently that they are just feeling super overwhelmed and super stressed with all the lesson planning. They're going day by day and they just can't get ahead of things. And they're even spending weekends doing their lesson planning. So um, I definitely was that teacher when I got started. Um, I would even watch The Bachelor in Paradise um, in my classroom just so I could get caught up. But I realized pretty quickly that that's something I didn't want to be doing anymore. I was uh, losing a lot of quality time. Sometimes I even bring in my dog, um, but then he got restless and didn't love it either. So um, definitely want to set you up for success now in the summer. So back to school time isn't as stressful and you have a good foundation for the year. And then of course, you definitely want to have support where you can connect and share and not feel like an island. So that's why I'm hosting this training today. Um, the day of like what less a week away from my wedding, because I really want to make sure that you are feeling supported and um, not feeling like an island like I did. Um, that is something that I really wish, um, that I had more of going into the STEM space. So our goal for our training today is, again, the steps that you're going to take now in this summer, that's going to save you some time for back to school success. So if you want to put anything in the chat, um, I can see that. Woohoo, Kathy is, Kathy is all about that chat. Woohoo. Yeah, Kathy, I'm so glad. <laughs> oh yeah, I am getting married soon. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I've been taking days off here and there, um, to make sure I get all the wedding planning done. And now it's all the little details. So still have time to do this training. <laughs> um, I, this actually keeps me less stressed doing this kind of stuff and, um, it, it's, it's all coming together. <laughs> Um, so if we haven't met before, I am Naomi Meredith. I am a K-5 STEM teacher and coach, and um, I ha have a very exciting role. I've, my role has changed a lot over the years. Um, so when I first got hired in my position five years ago, um, part of my role was coaching teachers in our building to implement STEM and technology in their classroom, also being the full-time tech person in my building, so fixing all the technology, and then also teaching K-5 STEM as a specials. So um, for a little time, I also did science GT. So my role has definitely changed. My schedule has changed a bunch um, where I've taught STEM three days in a row, same kids, sometimes one day a week, um, eight classes a day. Um, and then more recently, um, K through five STEM five days a week, same kids in a row, but definitely have seen a lot of different structures of what STEM can be um, and can really resonate with what you're um, working with. Um, I, you can see in the picture, um, that is my teacher, honey. You probably hear about me talk about him a little bit on the podcast. I'm hoping to do a podcast episode with him soon. Um, he's not too thrilled about it. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, and then that is little Freddie Fred with the big ears. That's Frederick. And, um, um, he is the most spoiled dog you'll probably ever meet. And he likes it when I make videos because he just lays in his bed and just listens to me talk. So that's me if we haven't met before. Okay. So thinking about the things that you can do this summer, you don't have to do all of this at once. And it also really depends on what your space is. Some of you are even going to a new building. So you might have to wait a little bit to do this. So don't feel super overwhelmed, but these are things you're going to be doing going back to school anyway. And so it's just good to get a, a leg up right now while your mind is fresh. Yes, you want to relax. Please relax, like I said. Um, but these are the, some things that will really um, put, give you a leg up going into that back, 
back to school season. So the first thing that you can do to prep for back to school is think about your supply refresh. So how can you really think about the materials that you currently have and materials that you're going to do in the future? Oh, Sarah in the chat is getting married this Saturday. Oh my gosh, thanks for being here. Yours is earlier than mine. <laughs> um, well, welcome. Um, so fun for you with your wedding and you're new to K through five or K through six STEM. So um, I think this training will help you out. So thinking about that supply re refresh, um, this is like going back to my lesson planning. I'm not really talking necessarily on how to plan a lesson right now. I have tons of stuff on that on my podcast, The Elementary STEM Coach. Um, but one thing I like to do at the end of the year is actually to do some makerspace projects. So at the end of the year, I do this unit called STEM Amusement Park, and this is in my TPT store. But it's a whole makerspace unit that I end the year with. Now, it was funny when I was doing this for the first time. Yes, this is the end of the year and I was doing something new, but it also helped me keep excited. So that is something too at the end of the year. Um, try something new. Even when you're exhausted, it's going to actually kind of energize you because you have something to look forward to and so do your students. So something I like to do is this STEM amusement park. It is all a makerspace unit. And this is a really great time to do makerspace projects the end of the year because because it's hands-on, it's engaging, the students are able to chat with each other, they can be creative. And also it really uses up my makerspace supplies where it's cleaning out all of my materials and then I can restock. Um, on my podcast, I talk about this, I'm pretty sure it's episode six where I talk about all my makerspace stuff, but I don't keep a lot, a lot of extra makerspace stuff on hand. But oftentimes at the end of the year, people are giving me lots of things or there's more trash or people are cleaning stuff out. And so it's a great time to do makerspace projects because you can um, clean out your stuff, restock if necessary, and then you can actually make a plan for things you need to buy in the future. So whether that is more tape, you probably will always need more tape, um, crayons, glue sticks, all of those things. Um, this is a great time again to do those makerspace projects, clean everything out, get it all organized. So then going into the school year, you don't have piles of junk left around the classroom. Um, you definitely want to be coming back into that school year, and this is good to do before long breaks anyway, but you want to come back into that school year where everything is cleaned out and whether all the bins are empty and you're waiting till back to school to fill them up, or maybe you everything gets used with your kids now, and then you can fill them up and then going into the school year filled. So um, doing stuff like that is really, really helpful. Um, also thinking about your supply refresh. This is a time, and you probably do this too, where teachers are leaving your building for various reasons. And so they might be cleaning out old curriculum or they might not be teaching anymore. And there are all those weird unwanted things in the hallway like blocks or Lego bricks. That's a, that's a hot commodity. Um, whiteboard. So there might be things that are getting cleaned out that can really fit well into your space. So really keep an eye out for those things. When I stepped into my classroom, um, <laughs> I didn't have hardly any building materials for my younger students. There was a lot of materials that are actually meant for older students in middle school, which I'm K-5, but there wasn't a whole lot of supplies for the younger students. And so um, shopping in my school building per se and sending out emails to the staff, keeping an eye out for certain items was a great way that I got started to supplement and add materials into my classroom that I didn't have before. Um, and I didn't have to spend any money. So keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. Um, even if you go around to garage sales and all that, that's a whole other lesson, but just a cool free way that you can repurpose things um, that are in your building. Also, along with that, the art teacher and I like to um, send out an email if um, teachers are getting rid of their community supplies or if there are students who don't 
want their supplies anymore. A lot of times fifth graders don't really want their crayons and markers anymore. Um, this is a great time to send out an email to the staff for any unwanted crayons, markers, glue sticks, any of those types of supplies that are going to get thrown out. This is a great time to collect those things so you can replenish your supplies when possible. So again, um, not all of this refresh has to be brand new things. Um, used things work just as well. Also, when um, if you are able to, I know some of you are new and you're not in your classrooms yet, but really taking the time now to organize all of your items is extremely, extremely beneficial. Um, you are going to have your room all cleaned out. Having labels, I highly recommend labeling things with pictures and words, which you can see um, I did here. These are some labels in my TPT shop. I think they're makerspace labels is what I call them, but labeling your items with pictures and words, and then this will give you an idea idea of the items that you currently have, what you're hoping to gather with donations um, or things you're keeping an eye out for over the summer. And then coming back into the school year, you have all your categories sorted out and you're not rushing around with labeling. And then everything can match. It looks really nice when it all matches. So thinking about this, the biggest thing, so with all of that, just really go through that um, inventory. So think about all of the current items that you do have, um, having a spreadsheet for that. Um, have all the items that you currently have, um, things you might even be collecting for now, and then what you can plan for for future purchases and or donations. Um, so really going through that inventory, it does take some time. It's a great time to clean things out and reset for the year. You could even do this a couple times a year. So back do this now and then maybe do it um, like before January, like midway through the year. So in my STEM into summer group coaching program, I actually have a spreadsheet, the same exact spreadsheet that I created for myself and use for my program. Um, in my STEM into summer program, you'll actually have the spreadsheet where you can categorize everything and then make a plan for your materials for the long term. Um, because it is a long term thing. It's um definitely something that um it's a program that you're building up. You're not going to have everything that you want um, starting off. And so really building up to um, what you're hoping for and making those long-term purchases, having a spreadsheet um, like that one can really help you out. Um, so definitely along the way, make sure if you want to put anything in the chat or anything you're wondering, um, you could still do that. Things are popping up. So you could do that at NaomiMeredith.com slash chat. Okay, the second thing when it comes to your prepping now, um, so end of school year, summer, and then go thinking about um, our back to school, is this is an excellent time for reflecting on lessons, especially in the STEM space. You probably like me when you, <laughs> I always joke that when you're teaching things that the first round, okay, so I teach everything at least four times. I have four of each grade. The first time you teach it, it's okay. Like there, it's good. It's exciting, but there are some like rough spots that you need to work out. So the first group gets the kind of the worst version of it. And then you have your second group <laughs> that it, it turns out really well. You're like, okay, we figured out all the problem solving. I feel by week three, week three is where it's at. The third time I teach a lesson is always my best version. And then by the fourth time, my last time, I'm so over it. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> so it's so easy to get through your units. You're like, all right, I'm done. I'm not going to think about it anymore. And I know you're constantly reflecting, but really sit down and truly reflect on your lessons and how things went throughout the year. So take a view of your whole entire year. And then how did your lessons go for each grade level? If you don't even have a year, a year long plan, this is a great time to create a rough draft of one. Um, maybe you've just been throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping that it sticks. This is a great time to really sit down and do this. So um, this is one summer, this is what I did. So I was telling you how I would go in on the weekends. I would spend all this time lesson planning, um, watching The Bachelor in Paradise, bringing my dog in, but I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, 
like it was just too much. And so I took one summer to really think through my whole year, reflected on the lessons that I taught, kept ones that worked, put them in new spots, thought about their grade levels, their progression of learning. And I was way more prepared going into the school year and I was excited to try new things. I could fit them out as needed. Um, Kathy feels the same way that when you're teaching um, all those lessons, it, it does get a little tiring, not boring. It's just you're ready for something else by the third or fourth week. So a big thing too, when I was reflecting on my lessons is also the way that I was teaching things. So yes, I was thinking about the lessons I was teaching. So the content, but how, how was it when I actually taught them? I used to teach all of my primary and secondary lessons the same. And I realized that wasn't really working, especially for my younger students um, in the K through two spot. Their stamina and just the way that they work and how they do projects is so much different than the older kids. And that's totally normal. Think about as a classroom teacher, um, a lot of you are classroom teachers coming into this space where the way you teach younger students is different than older students. And so that was something that I did when I was thinking about my year long plan is structuring my units differently for K through two and then three through five. So that was actually part of my whole year long plan process. So um, there's a whole process to each of these. So definitely you can jump in on my workshops, NaomiMeredith.com slash workshops, and I can talk you through all of that to help you through. They're already pre-recorded, um, so that can give you some help for your lesson planning. So think about your lessons right now. How How is it that you're teaching kids? Are you teaching everybody the same? Do you need to mix it up for your younger students? The answer is probably yes. Um, maybe you have a harder time with the older students. That was actually my struggle. I struggled more teaching older kids than younger kids. Um, but the process that I taught the younger kids was needed a change. Um, but the process was okay for the older kids. So I'm um, really sitting down right now and reflecting on your year and how your lessons are going is super important while it's fresh in your mind. Also, think about your lessons and are you actually connecting to standards? Are you even planning with standards? Maybe you are. Maybe you are doing some. Maybe you're planning with a few standards or maybe there's some standards you haven't thought about. Um, are you only planning with science standards? I know um, I was reading in one of my Facebook groups today um, that... Uh, Texas, their TEKS, T-E-K-S, um, is coming out with some STEM standards, which, which is super exciting. Um, where I'm at in Colorado, we do not have that. So I use a mixture of um, next generation science standards, um, integrating the Common Core State Math Standards, along with mathematical practices. And then again, the Common Core State Standards. Um, in my last training, which you can watch for two more days, but I talked all, all about um, lesson planning. And there are some like hidden ones in the Common Core State Standards when it comes to speaking and listening. Um, there's some great collaboration <laughs> and ways to communicate ideas within those standards. So definitely go and check those out. Also think about, are you even using the SD standards for students, those technology and innovation standards? So that's a really great time now is reflect. Are my lessons working? What do I need to change? Um, what is the process that I am teaching students? How does that, how is that going? And then also what standards am I hitting? Am I even doing all of the content themes in STEM? Am I really having balanced lessons throughout my year? What are some holes I am missing? Can this go into the supplies that I am ordering? What can I add on um, based on my capabilities and even the time that I have with students? So definitely sit down. This is going to take more than like 30 minutes. Trust me. You could even do grade by grade. So take a week and do grade by grade and sort it out that way. Or, um, you could even start with like an overall unit. How are you teaching certain units? Um, and go, or if you don't have units, this is a great time to make them. <laughs> 
So thinking about this, I would well, one time in the car. So the, the two places I get most of my inspiration are super random. And maybe you get your same inspiration the same way. Let me know in the chat. My first biggest <laughs> spot of inspiration is walking my dog. Um, so we go on a lot of walks. I listen to a lot of podcasts and audiobooks, but sometimes I get too inspired. I have to turn it off. Um, so a lot of times I'll get a lot of inspiration walking my dog. And then the other one is when I'm driving. So two biggest spots. Oh, and third one, when I'm traveling, which is when you shouldn't be thinking about work, but I can't not stop thinking about STEM. <laughs> um, so those are my three big biggest inspirations. So on one of those inspiration times, um, I thought of this whole spreadsheet in my head. I think in lists and I think in spreadsheets. So if you want to know what my mind looks like, that's what it is. So I came up in, in my with in my head a whole spreadsheet of how to really audit my lesson plans when it comes to all of the things that you need to organize. So thinking about all of your grade levels and then organizing all of your units, um, by big themes. So makerspace, robotics, 3D printing. So having everything categorized and then really sitting down for every single lesson that I teach my students. When am I teaching this? How long is it going to teach? Or how long is it going to take me to teach it? Is this an in-class activity? Is it an after school? Is this an at-home experience? Is this an in-home field trip? So really auditing every single every single lesson that I am teaching kids or ones that I'm hoping to teach. And this has really created a basis for my year long plan and how to improve everything, um, even updates that are coming to my year long plan. And again, this is a um, spreadsheet that I, this is actually, I, I, I've had it in my Google Drive for a while, um, but definitely this is a super helpful spreadsheet with drop down tabs um, that'll be in my STEM into summer um, group coaching. And then the last thing is super important, and I think that's a big reason why a lot of you are here, is you're finding and building your STEM community. So I talked about this before, but um, when I got my K-5 STEM teaching position five years ago, I was a classroom teacher for six years, and I was really interested in innovative things and hands-on learning with my students and implementing those practices with my kids. And there weren't any opportunities at the time in my building to implement STEM. And so this job popped out up in a neighboring district and it was a new to me district, a brand new remodeled classroom. I didn't know any of the teachers. I didn't know any of the students. And I would be the only STEM teacher in my building. So I'm like, yep, sounds, sounds dreamy. Doesn't sound hard at all. <laughs> um, but one thing that really disappointed me in this role um, over the past five years is there wasn't a whole lot of support when it came to things at the district level for a K through five STEM position. Um, my district was always talking about how we're all about innovation. We're all about improving everything, but then there never was any support for us at the elementary level. And so that's when I definitely took it upon myself to find outside resources. And then a big reason why, um, I really revamped this business is so that teachers like me didn't feel alone. I've never wanted other teachers in this kind of position to feel stranded and feel like you have to figure it out all on your own because you shouldn't have to. Most of us, like I said, have been classroom teachers before. And you are used to planning with the team. And then you go into this position that is so much fun. You're teaching all the kids in this school, but it's really isolating. It's one of the most isolating roles I've actually have ever had in my teaching career. Even though you teach all the kids, you're always surrounded, but you're the only adult and you're making these decisions that you hope work, but you don't have anyone to bounce ideas off of. So that is definitely the biggest thing at this end of the school year starting now and you're here already, so you're in a great place is how can you build up your STEM community? How do you have a few people that you can really chat with and bounce ideas off of? If your district is more supportive of this and has more opportunities, I am so excited for you. And I am so glad for that because that definitely needs to happen. And that is a, again, 
huge reason why I'm doing what I'm doing because I want you to feel successful and I want you to feel supported. And in turn, you're going to be less stressed and then you can do the best for your students. I It's it's such a fun, fun, fun role, <laughs> but you sometimes you need to talk through things if your crazy ideas are going to um, actually work. So definitely think about, are there other teachers in your district that you can connect with? Maybe yes, PE, PE are in music, but really are there other U's in another building? If there's not, are there any in a neighboring district that are close by? I have actually met up with STEM teachers in neighboring districts to me and um, just even talking with them, what are what is the same and what is different? What are some local opportunities? What are some grants that we can talk about? So being able to have that network in that community is so, so powerful. And I want you to really start building up your community. Also, another huge thing that I love doing to help network is, and hopefully you have opportunities like this too, is to attend a local conference um, or even a national conference. ISTE this year is ISTE. ISTE this year is in Philadelphia. And I was invited to go, but I'll be on my honeymoon. Poor me. <laughs> um, some of you asked if I'd be at ISTE. No, I won't be at ISTE this year. Next year I will be in 2024. ISTE will actually be in Colorado. And I am on the board um, to help plan it. So come and come and join. Um, but this one's in Edco. This is my local Colorado conference and I'm on the board of this as well. But attending a local conference is so powerful. I don't know if you've ever seen um, the show, if you have put in the chat, Abbott Elementary. It's on Hulu. Abbott Elementary, there's an episode about these teachers attending a conference. <laughs> And there's like the teacher Janine and she's like all pumped up about it and like so excited about going. I'm Janine. So if you've seen that episode, that's me. Um, I'm all about a good conference and just really connecting with other teachers, even talking to the vendors and like hearing people's experiences and stories and how we can have this network to empower us as teachers, but then in turn also empower our students. Um, so definitely hit up those conferences, see if your district has a grant that you can write or even pay for part of it. You never know until you ask. And then I think a lot of you here, um, you probably do use this, but really utilize social media. It's in the name. It's social. Um, so check out social media. I love, love, love Abbott Elementary. Chrissy, I do too. I'm obsessed. My teacher, honey, likes it and he teaches high school. It's such a cute show. <laughs> But definitely utilize social media. Um, find me on Instagram at Naomi Meredith underscore. I have Twitter, same handle. Don't really use it. Have Twitter, same handle. Or um, TikTok, don't use it. But find me on Instagram um, or on Facebook. But finding um, your connection of um, social media is a great place to start where um, that's really helped me grow again as a teacher as well. It's a really great place to be. Also, if you're thinking about, ooh, click the wrong button. Having an online conference or not conference, having an online community. Um, I have my STEM teacher bookshelf membership. This is our next book that we're actually going to read. It's a really great read, Invent to Learn. Um, but inside there, we have discussion questions that help your growth as a STEM teacher. And then also reading guides that you can use to help you think deeper when it comes to STEM. So um, I read all the books at least twice <laughs> and create those reading guides for you. And so the June one is already um, in there. So it'll pop up on June 1st, and then you get access to all the books as well. And then we also have really fun, um, a fun live call every month where you can meet other teachers and chat with them. That is my absolute favorite part is when all of us get together once a month and talk. I have met the most amazing teachers in our STEM community and definitely want you to meet them as well. It's just a really cool way that um, we can connect and support each other. So definitely definitely build up your STEM community. You need it. Like I said, this role is very fun, but it can be very isolating um, when you are teaching such a specialized role. 
And then if you're also looking for even more, if you want more access to me and even more deeper access with other teachers, um, I still have some spots open in my STEM into summer program. Um, so this is a great way that we can take everything we're talking about now in this, um, in this whole training and just go deeper in all of that. So definitely thinking about how you can meet the needs of all of your students and your learning styles all year. What should you even buy? That was a weird thing. If you go back on my old Instagram stories, um, it's like one of the highlight bubbles. I bought a ton of stuff my first couple of years and tested a lot, a lot of things because my room was pretty much empty. Um, and so so instead of you having to buy all of it, I can just help you and tell you what to buy. And then also having that um, in-depth community so that you aren't doing it by yourself. So if you're ready to take it to the next level, there's all these opportunities. Um, in the STEM into summer, you will have 16 weeks with me and other STEM teachers who are also ready to take it to the next level where you have that community that you can bounce ideas off of each other, create that customized year-long plan. So whatever you teach, whatever works best for your schedule. I just had a call with a teacher in the program and she is teaching a K-5 through STEM after school program. And her schedule is really interesting where the kids come in and out, but she has a different grade level every day. So what we did during our call is really think about what her schedule is actually going to look like and how that's going to influence the different units she's going to teach because her schedule changes from summer to the school day or um, till the school year. And then going into our first call this Thursday, um, we're going to be thinking about how we can do that lesson audit and have all that supply audit as well. And then going from there, creating that purchasing plan. So this is definitely what we'll be working on this summer where you can actually have um, access to me. So you'll get access to all of those templates that I was just talking about. So the first month you'll be auditing your um, supplies, auditing your lessons, have feedback with all of those templates. Then starting in July, you'll get um, 12 weeks of the audio one-to-one. -one. So you get um, all access to me and other teachers in the community to really help support you within this program. Um, we'll also have the weekly live calls, which are my absolute favorite, along with those replays if you're on a busy schedule, which we definitely all are. And then customized templates, so templates that are already made and then things that will be created to help fit your needs. So we would get started with this. Um, so there are some spots I have some time this week and next week that we would have that 30-minute one-to-one live coaching call. And then you also would get three months free of the STEM teacher bookshelf. So you'll get access to that community as well in all of the past resources inside. So there are nine spots available. So definitely want to jump in on this. So you can do all of your lesson and supply auditing this June, and then you'll be ready for the summer. So um, definitely have dropped down the price. So um, have thinking about what would work best for you on a teacher budget. Um, it's just 10 monthly payments that um, can help you really be successful in having that one-on-one -on -one support. So once now you have all of these ideas and all of these things to think through, um, share in the chat what is one action item that you're going to do first. Are you going to do a supply audit? Are you going to build up your STEM community this year? Maybe you want to do all three, but what are you going to do first? Or are you going to be doing that lesson planning review? So share in the chat what you are hoping to work on first, or maybe you are already working on it right now. And maybe you have a different idea. Maybe it's, maybe you're going to do something completely different. So thank you so much again for being here during this training. I love doing this kind of stuff for you guys and helping support you along the way. So if you are ready to take it to the next level, 
If you're ready to take it to the the next level and really have that extra hands-on support, I am here for you. There are so many opportunities for us to connect together. So if you want to just even hop on a call with me for 15 minutes um, for absolutely free and want to chat about what would work best for you, what are you looking for, I have some slots already open. So if you want to do that at naomimeredith.com slash call, then We can jump on a call. You can do it right now. And then you'll see all the times that are available. Pop in on a call. Let's chat. Let's see how I can best support you this summer and going forward. Because again, I don't want you to feel like an island. That is the most, that is, it's the most sad part thing about this role. It's the most fun job, but. I don't want you to feel stranded and feel stressed. Let's help you feel successful. There are nine spots available in my STEM into summer program. You can jump in on that. But if you want to jump in on a call, definitely do that as well. So Kathy is going to be working on what to purchase. Oh, because she actually has to purchase everything on June 5th. So that's Monday. So Kathy has to get on that. (laughs) So um, good luck, Kathy. You have a few days. Um, And then Sarah's going to work on her supply organization, and then Chrissy is going to work on that supply inventory and that audit. So definitely awesome. So again, thank, thank you again for being here. Let me know how I can support you. Feel free to schedule a free 15 minute call with me, naomimeredith.com slash call. And I would be happy to, to let you know what, how we can work best together. There are some cool things coming up in July, but definitely welcome you into the STEM into summer program where you can have success in the end of the school year this summer, and then build that foundation for back to school. Thank you again. You guys all know where to find me and I will talk with you all soon.